Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, October 23rd. We are 13 days to the elections and eight days to Halloween. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell the difference. Tracy, glad to see you. Welcome. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really good. We're getting results in and people signing up for our classes, and that's a good feeling. It is, absolutely. There's good energy, good. energy here. There is, and we've been doing a lot of new content we're going to talk a little bit about that today. There's some really interesting stuff that's going on. We're taking advantage of a lot of the new tools that are out there, and I'm really excited about it. It's some very cool stuff that's been happening. The big news for bar exam, there's really two pieces of big news. New York dropped their bar exam results last night at midnight in the way that they always do it, where just an email shows up in your inbox and you get your results. And so congratulations to everyone that passed the New York UBE last night. And to those that were not successful, we're going to talk a little bit about the protocol and what we want to do there. But I don't have any statistics yet. It's just as we're just a few hours after the results, we don't have a lot of information there. So that's one part of the news that we've got. The other big news is obviously what's going on in California with respect to the February 2025 and later exams. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. There's been some interesting, really head-scratching developments, I think, in that front. So that's where we're at. Students are just now starting to get underway with their studies for 2025. We really don't have a lot of questions from students to talk about today, Tracy, but I thought we could talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on, and we'll start with Bar Exam News and talk about some of the new material we are creating at Celebration Bar Review. That's the game plan for today, and so I don't think we're going to go real long with today's call, but if anybody that's on the call with us live has questions, just let us know. And if you're watching on replay, shoot us a note if you've got a question. So I thought where I'd start today would be to talk about July results. As I said, New York dropped their results last night. And this is later in the game than we usually see from New York in terms of when they gave out the results, but they are now here. And uh, there's not a lot that I can say about it. I can tell you that... Uh, from the early numbers I've seen, it looks to be tracking about the same as the other major jurisdictions in terms of repeat taker bar results. And we'll have some numbers, I imagine, next week when we get into that. If you were not successful on your New York or any jurisdiction that we're preparing you for, send us your score sheets and I will send you a link to schedule a conference call with me so that we can go over your results together and see what we've got to do for the next time around. I think it's important to get underway quickly. That's one of the challenges, isn't it, Tracy, is that you get these results. It's the end of October. The natural inclination is to just, if you weren't successful, it's to grieve it, it's to feel bad, it's to have a whole lot of emotional reaction, but you don't have much time for that, do you? You do have a few days. <clears throat> I'm a Halloween birthday kid. And I look at that as All Souls Day, and then the next day is All Saints Day. It's a line of demarcation. So I would say if you haven't started, do your All Souls work, which is feeling bad that you didn't pass, fighting with your super ego, and then as of November 1st, adopt a new attitude, an All Saints attitude, uh, a positive attitude, and move forward. This is the time to get going. Believe it or not, you don't have that much time when you start in November because you have a couple holidays, not to mention yeah. the disruption that the election is going to be for all of us in the next couple of weeks. Then you get right into December and all the family commitments, your personal yeah. commitment, your spiritual commitment, if that's yeah. where you are. Before you know it, it's January. So this is the yeah. time. We're here. We're available. You can sign up for coaching with us. We're ready to go. You can sign up for workshops. There is a student question, Jackson, about mind maps now. And okay. let's, let's save and that question. I'll start working on those. Think about your last experience in the bar and what went well for you and what didn't go well for you and maybe start on. Yeah. But yes, it's time to go. Yeah. And I think that we can't overemphasize this. There's going to be a lot going on in the next couple of weeks, but it really doesn't slack off much. We get to November and then we start getting ready for Thanksgiving, as you said, and then we're into the full-on holiday season. And I think for most people, it's a real challenge to balance 
their personal life, their work life, their family life, and their bar exam study life. Those are all competing for your time. So anything you can get done now is to your advantage. That's easier for somebody that's just getting underway and taking the exam for the first time or haven't taken the exam for a long time. If you're just getting your results, we know that's emotionally challenging. In a minute, I'm going to talk about a resource that we've created that might be helpful to you if you are retaking the exam. It's a new ebook that we've created. For now, I just want to say it's important to get in touch with us. Let us know that you need to take the exam and that you were not successful. Don't be embarrassed or shy. I know sometimes people foxhole and they don't want to talk about it. We understand that. But there's no judgment here. There's no there's nothing except that we want to help you. So please don't be hiding from us. Come out and tell us what's going on, and we will do our best to help you make the next exam your last exam. That's our goal here. All of your course material is available to you. Nothing got turned off. If your results were not successful, your course is enabled. You don't need to ask us for that. It's already set up for you. I wanted to briefly go through since we don't have much in the way of detail yet, and talk about some jurisdictions that did report results since our last get-together and tell you what's going on around the country. I'm going to take my glasses off so I can actually read this. The first jurisdiction was Arizona. Pass rate for repeat bar takers was 30%. And then we've got Massachusetts, and their repeat taker pass rate was 25 Michigan, repeat bar taker rate was 19%, so a little bit of an outlier. In Pennsylvania, the repeat bar taker pass rate was 33%. South Carolina was 40%, but only 470 bar takers total, so pretty small sample size there. In Tennessee, we're back down to 23% for repeat bar takers, and in Virginia, 46%, although that's not a UBE jurisdiction, so it's a bit of an outlier. And in Washington State, a 26% repeat taker pass rate. So that's what we're looking at across the country. You can see that we're in that 20 to 30% pass range pretty consistently. That's where I expect New York would be. Texas results also came out last week as we expected. We can't report a lot of results, but in Texas, we can tell you 30% was the repeat taker rate there. So that was on the higher side for these big jurisdictions, but pretty much everybody in that 20 to 30% pass rate for repeat takers. If you're a repeat bar taker and you were not successful, you're in the majority. The key, the thing that I really want to emphasize, whether you took our course or somebody else's and you were not successful, you're a repeat bar taker, you have to do things differently. This is the most frustrating thing for me as a mentor, talking to somebody that has chronically been unsuccessful on the exam and they just won't change what they're doing. If you don't have the money to buy the resources you need, sit out an exam, take some time, you know, gather your resources. If you don't have the time to study, sit out an exam. There's no penalty from our course to do that. But for goodness sake, don't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I think that's one of the big mistakes that we see from people is that they just get comfortable doing the same thing. It's the stinky diaper, right? It's smelly and it's poopy, but it's mine. And so I just sit in it for a while. Don't do that. You've got to make yourself uncomfortable in order to grow. But that's a hard concept for people, isn't it, Tracy? It is hard. And it is paralyzing to pull out what your notes were from before, what your mind maps were from before, and think that you can work the same way. This is where I'm saying I do have a topic for today, and it's this all souls thing. This is where your all souls examination is this next week. What tripped you up? Was it a specific style of test taking? Was it the multiple choice? Was it the essays? Was it specific topic areas? Was it your timing? This is the time to journal and make some real hard looks at why you did not pass the bar. It's not because you're stupid. It's not because you can't do it. It's none of those things. There is something that we can discern. And Jackson's willing to meet with any of you just email him and he'll meet with you for half an hour and go through that with you and help you create a plan going forward. I'm here to help you. If you want to buy some coaching calls, we can take a look at all of those things. You can do this, but you can't do it the same way you just did it. I just think it's so important to be thoughtful about what you're doing and be willing to be uncomfortable and try new things. I've been talking to some people who've just joining the course this week 
and coming from other courses. And we talked about how critically important it is to switch gears and try different things. We have a variety of tools in this course to help you. Not every tool is appropriate for everybody. You know, trying those tools is important. If you're already in the course and not using all the tools, then you ought to talk with us and let's figure out what would be helpful to you. We're not just trying to sell you stuff. We're trying to find the right combination of items that will help you get over the top. That's our goal as we work through step by step. Obviously, we're still waiting on the California results. Those will come out November 8th. It's a long way away still, isn't it? Those students will have to move very quickly. There's no doubt about it. That's really the last of our big jurisdictions now that we're waiting on. There are a few small ones, but we've got most of the country in at this point. The numbers continue to indicate that if you're a repeat bar taker, you just can't back your way into the exam. You're going to have to really be intentional about it. As Tracy said, you're going to have to lean into it. You're going to have to try new things and you're going to have to, in my opinion, let us guide you and work with you and help you get to the next step and the next step. So that's where we are, I think, at this stage, generally. That's the results story at this point. All right. The next story we got to talk about is California for 2025. This is a head scratcher, isn't it, Tracy? We get on here week after week, and unfortunately, we have the same thing to tell you, which is that we don't know what's happening there. And now we're a whole month closer to it. All we can tell you is that we're keeping our ear to the ground and we'll let you know as soon as we know. Study the same way that you would study if you knew exactly what was happening. If we need to make adjustments, we will. It is a yeah. head scratcher. I don't mm -hmm. know how they're going to make this kind of weird. Here's what we know as of today. The okay. California Supreme Court this week finally gave their approval to this new plan to have the the existing legacy bar exam scrapped in California, only in California at this point, and to be replaced by an exam written by the Kaplan Bar Prep Company. That raises a series of questions in and of itself, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. Kaplan is drafting a new exam. Part of the head-scratching part of this is that the California Supreme Court approved a plan in which the examiners will give a beta test of this exam in November. So next month, and if you take this beta test and score well on it, you get 40 points added to your total when you take the exam in February. I am waiting for the class action lawsuit from the people not allowed to take the beta test who are saying, why would somebody get a 40-point boost? To put it into context, it's really a four-point boost everywhere else. It's just California multiplies everything by 10. But why would those people get a boost? Because they took a practice test and other people don't. It seems wildly unfair and inequitable. The Cal Supreme Court said, we're not going to decrease anybody's score. So if you do badly on this beta test, it doesn't hurt you. Does this make any sense at all? I've never heard of anything like this. Take our practice test and we'll give you a boost in points. That strikes me as just being ridiculous and unfair, but apparently that's what they're going to do. Now, along the same lines, the California Supreme Court rejected a proposal for an apprenticeship program or for a alternate path to licensure. They rejected a, an attempt to stay with the existing legacy exam. What's going to happen is if you're sitting for the California exam in February, the way it looks right now, you're going to either do at-home testing or a remote center testing, like a Pearson testing center, but that's not clear as to how that's going to happen. It does appear right now that there will be no major testing sites like we've had in the past. And of course, the MBE is gone. That raises the question, what's going to be on the exam? By state statute, California, you cannot change the form of a major high stakes exam with less than two years notice. So the Kaplan written test will have to be functionally about the same as the multi-state bar exam. That's good news for a bar taker. The problem for the Cal bar is the NCBE is clearly going to sue California and Kaplan for copyright infringement. I'm not the lawyer for the NCBE, but I imagine they'll file for a temporary restraining order and an injunction so the test can't be given. I'm continuing to stand by my position that there might not be a California bar exam in February 25, but we'll see. To Tracy's point, if the exam goes off and Kaplan writes the exam, it should be very similar to what the MBE is already. 
Kaplan's questions have a genesis in the same place as our questions. We feel very confident in our ability to prepare you for whatever Kaplan puts out. We don't know what materials they're going to release, who's going to get them, how that's going to happen. Actually, it doesn't matter. It'll still be the same seven topics because it has to be by state law in California. And we would assume that the balance of the questions would be the same as it is right now. In other words, 200 questions and 25 questions per subject in each of the seven subjects. As far as the essays and performance tests go, Kaplan's going to write them, but I don't expect that to be any different than what we've already seen out of the California examiners in years past. That's where we are today. Undoubtedly, it will change again next week because it changes every week. And we'll see what happens. Now that the California Supreme Court has weighed in, I'm waiting for the NCBE to go to court and say, you can't do this. So we'll see. The other piece I want to say is if you're a Kaplan Bar student, you can't take the Kaplan course. They have to get out of the California exam space. Contact us. We're glad to help you. If you're taking Kaplan somewhere else and you're still, say you're in New York, but you want to take the California exam, you still can't do it with Kaplan. I'm not sure if Kaplan's going to stay in the bar review prep business. It seems they're putting their chips all in this creation of a test and seeing if they can get some other jurisdictions. I don't know how that will impact their existing student population, but if you find yourself without a bar review, by all means, contact us. So that's what we know. It's weird, isn't it, Tracy? It is, but I think it's weirder for you and I than it is for our students. Just yeah. go ahead and study because yeah. whether Kaplan writes the questions or whether NCBE right. writes the questions doesn't really matter. They're still multiple choice questions. They may change the format a little bit, but they're not at this point going to throw you a huge curveball on what the exam looks like. So I don't want any of our students spending a lot of anxiety time worrying about what this exam is going to look like. Just follow right. the course, right. do your mind maps, do your photo reading, do your practice tests, just keep going forward, always forward. Yeah, and if you have the opportunity to be a beta tester for the exam, by all means, take it. I don't see any downside to it. You might get some information, but that's certainly not where I want you to put your focus and your energies, but if you want to take it, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll keep you informed. But again, the emphasis is keep studying. There's nothing that's different. There are no new subjects. There are no fewer subjects. You need to be doing everything that you would do anyway for the Cal exam and start preparing to take the test at home. We will provide you with materials and support. This is really what we did during COVID. No big change there for us. All right. That's the news for California and the bar exam. I wanted to talk about a couple of resources that we've created, and we'll get to student questions as well. I don't want to ignore those, but let me talk about the next item, which is a couple of weeks ago, we started doing what we call deep dive podcasts. If you subscribe to our podcast, The Extra Mile for Bar Exam Takers, you have been receiving those deep dive podcasts. We've started doing them in some subjects, but for our students... We have got a number of these podcasts now put into your online course platform. In fact, we've done so many that we didn't list all of them. What I want to tell you today is that what you want to be doing is going into your state or multi-state assignments and go down to the bottom of each unit. You will see some optional assignments that say deep dive podcasts on various topics. Now, the reason we're calling them deep dives is that we're going into some of the harder subject matter in each of these subjects, like hearsay in property, talking about mortgages or in contracts, talking about parole evidence, for example. These deep dives go anywhere from about eight minutes up to about 25 minutes. It's a podcast style. It's done through AI, although we review it and look at it, and it's based on our materials. It's quite remarkable. When you listen to it, if you don't know it's AI, you probably wouldn't know it. It is very conversational, easy to listen to and follow. In the assignments, we've put in timestamps and a summary of each podcast so you can look at it. And if you don't want to listen to the whole thing, you can just jump to the section that you want. Now, what we've started adding in the last week is that we are starting to take some of the MBE questions 
and run those through the algorithm and doing deep dive podcasts on those questions. And it's fascinating. So if you are struggling with evidence questions on the MBE, you simply go to the assignment that is the deep dive podcast for evidence questions. And the speakers go through about 15 or 20 questions in the context of, of larger principles of the subject. I'm loving it personally. I think it's awesome. You don't have to listen to me, which is nice. And you're getting a nice combination. We are feeding in our outlines, our lectures, our questions, all of those materials. And the AI is pulling all of that together. So it, it's really pretty cool, honestly. If there's a subject that you're struggling with, let's say you're a foreign trained attorney and you're struggling with constitutional law or criminal law, go to the deep dive podcast before you start the subject. You'll get this wonderful overview of the topic and it will help explain some things, I think, in fairly non-technical terms to help you understand what the subject is about. And then you can review in more depth. If you're not in our course, you can listen to a number of the deep dives through our podcasts. And we are running those every couple of days. You know, check them out and see what you think. We've gotten some really good feedback on these. And I wanted to share one note. One student wrote, these are incredible. And they were talking about torts. And they said, there's a general torts conversation. And then there's the torts MBE questions. The student said, I really like it. The conversation provides a reprieve from the weight of the work and a different way to conceive of the law and make it stick. You can listen to this lecture like it's a conversation and then unlock it in your own mind. It feels like a conversational mind map. I thought that was interesting. Conversational mm. mind map. It's a nice way to get a different take on this material. It's optional. Nobody has to go through it. We're not trying to create extra work for anyone, but I do think it streamlines a little bit. It sounds like regular humans talking podcast. I think it's a tremendous resource for students who just took a bar exam and did not pass it to get yeah. back into your studies. Look at these topic areas and let it get you back into the idea. Maybe sit with your mind map while you're listening to these and see if you yeah. have errors or things that you need to redo. You may want to redo all of your mind maps and AI can help you with that. The mind maps program yeah. we have will help you with that too is writing, typing on your typewriter. Even if what you're doing is sending Christmas card emails to everyone, be typing on your computer, be writing essays, write songs, write poetry, write anything, but be writing. Because yeah. that is the biggest bugaboo for people taking the exam. They get in and they think they were ready and we think they were ready. And then we hear, I didn't have enough time to finish my answers. I got all yeah. messed up on the order of things. I forgot to answer one of the calls, one of the questions. And that all goes back to your facility with your keyboard. You and yeah. your keyboard need to have an intimate relationship right now. Uh, yeah. This is the time to get it going again. Yeah, I think that's true. You can use these deep dives as background sometimes. You could put them on while driving just to listen to them and check them. You could certainly put them on while you're walking or at the gym. But I think to Tracy's point, if you take them and you use them with your mind maps, which is really the way to make it happen, the mind maps are the key to this study approach. It's a great opportunity to see how the topic fits together. And it's a really easy way to follow through the mind maps. I hope you'll do that and share your feedback with us. Let us know what you think about it. Tracy mentioned, if you find yourself retaking the exam, that these are a good tool. We've added another tool just this morning that I'm very excited about. I've been working for a while on a new ebook, which I've titled Overcoming Bar Exam Failure, A Guide for Repeat Takers. This is a free ebook. If you are interested in getting a copy, just shoot us a note. If you're in our course already, we're going to make this available to you. But if you're not in our course, just let us know. We're putting it out as a podcast and social media. We did a deep dive on it, summarizing the ebook. But the ebook is really taking you through what we did. We asked, what are the 10 biggest problems that repeat bar takers face? And then having identified from a variety of sources, what those 10 big problems were, we then said, what are the tools and approaches that we can offer that would help address those problems? 
That's really interesting when you pull all that together. I've been doing this for so many years. Sometimes I'm like a fish asked to describe water. I'm so immersed in bar review after 30 years. I don't necessarily always think about the tools that we have. I just know they're all out there. And this was a great way to pull all that together and say, here's a tool, here's an approach, here's something that we do. And so we put all that together in this ebook and I'm really pleased with it. I've been working on it for a while and I'm glad to be able to put it out today. It worked out that way. It's a great resource. The podcast will come out on Thursday and it will have a summary of the ebook and a link to the ebook. And if you're interested, just shoot us an email and we will give you a link so that you can check it out. It's good to have a roadmap, a blueprint, if you're retaking the exam, because there's so much, it's emotional, it's mental, it's physical, it's so many things going on at once. And what do you do, right? And there's, and everybody's got advice. I think the reality is everybody has advice for you, whether they know what to do or not. And sometimes that can be overwhelming to people. This is one resource that pulls it all together. Very excited about that. That's great. I'm glad you're doing that. I, I want to spend a couple of minutes explaining some more about the resource that we have added and become very intentional about, and that is personal coaching. Many of you have purchased that within your class in the last few months. Some of you have used it as an adjunct to your other studies. We had a very successful result from a student who took that plunge. She went to boot camp and then had personal coaching and she passed the bar because she worked very hard with her coach. It happened to be me this time, but that doesn't mean anything. But she worked very hard with me to improve her writing. And by the last couple of sessions we had, I really had very little to critique her on. She got it so well. But it was because she stepped forward and leaned into the resource that we have in two very phenomenal teachers here. Jackson is an incredible teacher. I'm learning this way, but I have a whole history of teaching myself. Because we work well together, we can use each other as a resource to help you. So this is the time, if you're going to step forward and do something different, do it with coaching. And then through the coaching, we can identify what your deficiencies are and coach you further. Hey, I think it would be good if you took the workshop on MBE. I think it would be good if you took the writing workshop. I think it would be good if you go to a boot camp. I think it would be good if you take the super ego workshop about how to get your mindset right. I'm going to stress this now because... If you buy 10 or 12 sessions, you can buy more, but if you buy those, it makes more sense if you have more time to put them in. What we tend to see is that students have bought those and then in the last three or four weeks, they want to try and get all their sessions in. It's hard for students to really think about what has happened in a session and to apply it and to go back and work on the mind map and with the material and then apply it to the next writing project. I just really want to emphasize that we have these resources and now is the time to start thinking about pulling the plug on those. Yeah, nobody jumps in and says, boy, I'm really anxious to start studying for the bar. You will appreciate that you started now when you get around the corner, by that I mean around the first of the year, and you're starting to say, oh man, how much work do I have to do? By starting now, you're giving yourself a real chance to be successful. Make sure you check that out. All right. I think that's everything I had on my list, but, but I know we had a student question. Tracy, you said we had a student question. You want to go ahead and pitch that out to me and we'll talk about it. We've been talking around it, but it's about if you didn't pass the bar recently, how do you then engage your mind maps again now? What's the best way to do that? That is a good question. What I would do is, first of all, pull out the mind maps and look at if you have any feedback from your bar examiners as to strengths and weaknesses on the exam, certainly using those. But in many jurisdictions, we don't get that information. For example, in Georgia, we don't know anything at all. In that case, I pull out the mind maps and I organize them by subject. Then I start by reading the mind maps out loud to myself. That simple act of doing the physical reading 
really helps solidify what's there, helps put it into your brain, helps make it make sense. And maybe something that's in there, most likely there'll be some things in there that you just don't remember or you don't know why you did them the way you did them. And so it's useful to go through and do that part of the process. That's step one. Step two, in my view, is you continue to build on your mind maps. You don't throw them away and start all over again. I've heard people say, oh, I'm going to create new mind maps. I would not do that. I would take what you've got and continue to work with it. It builds on what you already know. Your brain's already got that structure built into it because it's looked at it. And I think that's the best way to use the mind map at this stage. So I guess what I'm saying is don't start again with new mind maps. Just keep adding to what you've got. Okay, I'm going to push back a little bit. Okay. Because if you had your mind maps and didn't pass, you may want to start over on the topics you didn't do well on because what's there is not getting through to you. And right. it may be that you need to, again, look at the relationships better Make yeah. sure if it's torts or contracts that you have your claims on one side of your mind map and your defenses on the other, and they relate to each other. If you are concerned about your mind maps, get some coaching calls, show us your mind maps, mm-hmm. and let us work with you on an individual basis, whether we think, oh, these are really good, or yeah. whether you may need to do them in handwriting, or you may need to do them with your computer or you may need more information in there or less or more relation, less transactional. I think that's a case by case decision. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think getting some input would be helpful. The only caution I've got is I don't want people getting bogged down in mind maps and not getting through the rest of the study. You can do a mind map pretty quickly. And if you're having trouble getting it done quickly, look at the bar maps product because it gives you the template for every subject, state and multi-state, and gives you several pre-done mind maps, and then you can build on those. So either way, I think you should get in and work on them, but don't overwork. Don't make the mind map the part that takes up so much time that nothing else gets done. To Tracy's earlier point, get on the keyboard, write, type, do your essays, do your performance tests if that applies, do your MBE or your Florida multiple choice questions, and then let the mind mapping flow in between as you're working. That would be my suggestion. I'm glad we got questions about mind mapping. I'm glad people want to know it. We also have a webinar on how to do a mind map. If you're not familiar with it, we've got a variety of resources there to assist you. I wish I had known about mind mapping when I was in law school, when I took the bar. Wouldn't it have been better? It's the bomb. If you use it correctly, it's the bomb. And it's not just for bar study. It's for your practice going forward. And For other things in your life, I use mind mapping for other things too. I agree with you, Jackson. The things we have available at CBR compared to what I had back in the Stone Age were big, huge volumes of material and really boring lectures. That was it. You were on your own. Of course, we had higher pass rates because the test was different or the grading was different or maybe we were just a lot smarter than you guys are now. I don't know. I haven't really figured that out all the way, but we have so much more available now. Yeah, we really do. The exam is different and our sophistication in how to prepare you for it is different. So take advantage of all of that. All right, good. Any other questions that came up in the chat box or are we good? No, there are no more questions. All right. Um, yeah. 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 I think we've covered everything we wanted to cover for today. Just hang in there, guys. Keep working. Those of you that are watching and listening either live or on this replay, you're ahead of the game. A lot of people don't even think about the bar until much later. So take advantage of this time and really make it count. That would be my best advice to listening or watching today. Off the news channels. Please. Especially now, just stay off of it. If you voted, great. You've done what you can do that way and just stay off of it because it's crazy making and it's not going to get any easier even after November 5th. That's true. So keep your head down, keep working, stay focused. It's it's a variable that we haven't had before, Jackson. Yeah. It matters. Very. All right. It's good to see those of you here with us today. Tracy, thank you very much. We will be back next week and start to gear up. We get through Thanksgiving 
And so the next thing that starts to happen is it really picks up in December. While we're still in October, we want to take advantage of these next few weeks. Thank you all for being here. Good luck to those of you still waiting on results. Check out these resources. Let us know what you think. And we look forward to speaking with you and hopefully doing some coaching. Thanks again, Trace, for being here. And we'll see all of you next week. Take care. Have a good Halloween, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.